Okay, so you've chosen to be an atomic tank. Uh, now what this guide is going to cover is everything you need to know in terms of spec, loadout, artifacts, uh, gear mods, gen generator mods, everything to give you a proper foundation on how to be an atomic tank. I will also cover a brief example of rotation. Um, I feel that if you are going to watch footage of an atomic tank, it's not necessarily going to be comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, uh, because you're going to have different situations. You have may have healers that are, have different abilities or different artifacts. You may be in different situations, but what this will give you is the proper foundation uh, to be an atomic tank and to be successful in either regular or elite content. So let's get into it here. So we're going to cover on just the basics of the uh, atomic tank, just in case you have no idea what uh, atomic tanking is about. So atomic tanking revolves around two aspects. So the primary aspect is getting yourself into the atomic uh, quark aura. So with that aura active, you get 35% control resistance, 25% damage absorption while you're not blocking. Uh, and then you basically heal for 2% of your max health. And I'll go into all examples uh, further. This is basically just like a brief kind of overview. So when you have atomic combos, basically they give you molecular charges that basically contribute to the, the ore. So basically adds, new, uh, adds a stack. Once you have three stacks and you gain six charges, your ore will activate. Uh, that's the long way. There is an ore shortcut, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, molecular charges, basically each time you do a, an atomic combo, you get healed for 40% of your max dominance. And then we have abilities that are considered a shortcut. Uh, so we can, there's a few here. So we, uh, for example, atom power assault. So activates your aura if you have at least one nuclear pressure stack and at least two charges used. So basically what this means is that you can activate your aura and after one combo instead of the longer way. So let's kind of give you just a brief idea what that's going to look like. So if I take a shortcut here like proton remedy and if I take an aura, a combo power like thermochemical uh, explosion, so the atomic ore, if I'm just comboing, and now my ore is active. So while you, the general consensus is that you won't want to be in your ore pretty much the, all the time. Uh, there are some unique scenarios where your ore is not going to be as effective, but that's pushing into elite content, so uh, I, I'm not going to really touch on that. So generally the rule of thumb is that all the time your ore is active, you're good. So that did take a long time. So say if your ore dropped in content and you're fighting uh, enemies or a boss, uh, that whole time you're not getting any damage absorption, you're not getting any control resistance, and you're not getting those extra heals from 2% of your max health. So a shortcut, so if I do one combo and hit Proton Remedy, I'm immediately into my aura. So that basically acts as an aura shortcut. Uh, the, basically, there's two shortcuts that are gonna be uh, any kind of viable. So Proton Remedy gives you that uh, gives a heal, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, and then the other main aura shortcut is Neutrino Blast, which is basically your group immunity. But the main difference is here is, which I'll touch on the loadout, is you'll see the cooldown is 18 seconds on there, and Proton Remedy is 12. So, getting back to the spec. So with Atomic, your primary choice is going to be hybrid because you're looking for that extra dominance and restoration, the 5% increase. Uh, because uh, honestly, as you've heard before, uh, the higher dominance is, the higher combo heal is going to be. Now, since you are going to be in comboing the entire time, if you do have power issues, you can be super powered spec. I personally never run into power issues using hybrid spec as Atomic. But uh, say if you do more solo content or more open world content, you can certainly spec super powered. Uh, the only main difference is going to be that 5% drop in, in Dom and Resto, uh, which will contribute to your shield strength and, and your heals, your small heals with Proton Remedy. But uh, I personally have never seen uh, any issues using hybrid. And in raids or alerts, you're going to have passive power with time or controller's power, so that shouldn't be an issue. So we're going to spec hybrid. So with critical healing chance and critical healing magnitude, once again, you have a couple options. Uh, I personally, because I have uh, a lot of skill points on live, I can afford to spec 20 and 40. These aren't going to impact your combo heals because those are mechanic-based heals. They, these ones are only going to affect your proton remedy heals, which is your main shortcut or your main heal over time. 
uh, and, a, and a burst heals basically as well. So that's why I spec this. If you have lower skill points, uh, just take enough to go 10 and 10, and which will get to the next tree. So I'll show you, I'll uh, respec from the start here just so I can show you that. So this is more for the low skill point approach. You're still tech specking hybrid, but here you're only going to put 10 and 10, which will get you enough skill points to get into the next tier. So see how it opens up the next tier. So I just saved myself uh, 40 skill points basically by not having to spec all that. So while the 40 skill points is not going to make a night and day difference, uh, it is helpful, but it's not going to make or break your tanking as atomic because like I said, your heals and your combo heals and your aura heals are based on mechanics. So it's just a luxury basically. So because Dominus is going to be your primary stat as atomic, you're going to put everything into atomic into dominance and then after that you're putting into health so i know uh, the glitch kind of skill points here is going to throw this off i'm not going to spec all skill points into that because obviously you're not going to have that on live uh in terms of iconic powers hard light shield is going to be your primary must in this category a hard light shield uh, outside of well uh, i mean densities you know, which will which will cover in the base shield multiplier formula if you've, if you've seen my ice footage here but uh hard light shield is going to be your your strongest shield uh, outside of a supercharge so that's the only thing you really need to take here amazon deflection once again is a luxury uh it just doesn't work necessarily work as well with atomic because of your combo so if you're sitting in amazon deflection the entire time is going to drop your aura then you have to shortcut back into it and it's just not necessary so on Tomb of Super Speed, uh, this is going to be the same for any movement mode. You want to take your, your primary movement mode. Uh, and then after that, uh, as Atomic, I'd like to take the Breakout Innates. Once again, this is a luxury, but uh, I personally like it as Atomic because since you're always comboing, you do get to crowd control or, or CC a lot as Atomic, uh, which means when you break out, you're going to get that power return. Uh, I mean, it's nothing drastic. It just helps you. Certainly, it's going to help you uh, compensate for that hybrid spec. So that kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, dash attack it is a nice shield. It's, it's a... Uh, 2500 shield, 30 second cooldown. Same as like, Perfect Poise if you're an uh, acrobat. Um, Dash attack isn't you're going to be your primary shield as atomic, but uh, if um, pretty much it gives you an option. It's more for like an eye of the Gemini build, which we'll touch on with artifacts. But I mean, if you, you have to spec one of these to get down to the tree, so you might as well take uh, dash attack. So in terms of weapons, your weapon choice as a tank uh, really is up to you. Uh, primarily, you want a weapon with a fast lunge. Um, I wouldn't say fast lunch is a quick lunch. So with like one-handed shield, uh, brawling, uh, even dual, it's fine. So the when you have ones like, I mean, you can use staff. Staff has a, a weaker lunge, but it has good uh, 360 degree juggles. So it's got a very good high combo weight. Um, Bow's got a really fast block breaker. So I mean, martial arts obviously it's a fast block breaker and, and a decent lunge as well. So I mean. Primarily, it's up to you. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, myself, I'm always going to be one-handed. I know a lot of people use shield, so those are your choices. But, uh, I mean, it doesn't drastically affect atomic because you're going to be in your combo auras. Uh, but uh, you, you need to do it just for lunge or for block breaking, obviously. So it's whatever weapon you feel comfortable with. So really, that's it. So what your weapon tree, you're not specking down and, and using the weapon because you're in your combo. So really, you're only taking that for the lunge itself and for the block breaker. And super speed, like I said, you're taking the break on an eights. And iconic powers, you're taking hard light shield. So after that, you're putting everything else into health. Because uh, like I said, your combo auras are based on 2% of your max health. So you don't have to worry about restoration. That's not going to matter as much for atomic. That's not going to have that large of an impact. Uh, on pro it's basically only proton remedy. Uh, so that's why the criticals would be fine for that. But uh, all your other skill points after you've spec'd your other innates here are going to health. So obviously I'm not going to max out the tree, but uh, all your skill points being to health. So you don't have to worry about any restoration, you don't have to worry about mind power, nothing like that. So let's touch on the gear now. So for weapon, it's always going to be absorption adapter. And basically, as you can read here, weapon attacks have a chance to activate a shield, reducing damage by 75%. It's basically just a luxury. And now, if you don't know where I found these, these are just from your generator mods. Um, these are just your white mods for your gear. So your helmet mod. Basically, here you've got two choices. 
Uh, it's normally I would always take supercharged mass density, which I'll touch on the loadout. But this is going to be your stronger shield in the game as tanking. Uh, but if you're more like for a Gemini build, you could take uh, dash attack. You could take uh, perfect poise. Or sorry, a pheromone bloom. It, this is only going to be used if you're going to uh, proc uh, either Gemini, which I'll touch on the artifacts. For your neck mod, it's always going to be fortified assault because. Uh, Basically, since stats revamp, they pushed all tankings away from more active tanking. So you don't want to block. Each time you block, you lose uh, some effect of your tanking. So either you lose your defense. In the Atomic's case, if you, you lose your 25% uh, absorption. So it's much more beneficial to uh, not block. Unless you, the only thing, you can block like a combo attack just to get a counter and knockdown on the enemy. But you're not just holding block just the entire time. It's, it's not going to be beneficial to you. So, for your back mod, like I said before, this touch on when I said Neutrino Blast was 18 seconds, Proton Remedy was 12 seconds, and uh, Density is your shield. So, you've got a couple options here. So, if you find yourself not being comfortable with your auras, you can spec Proton Remedy, which will basically knock 10% off that 12 seconds. Or you can do Accelerate Density, which gives you uh, that shield. Density itself is the weakest shield in the and actually in the game out of all the tanks, but uh, it, it's still something beneficial. So for myself personally, I always take Accelerate Density, just because I don't find myself using Neutrino Blast that, or sorry, not uh, Proton Remedy that often. Oops, it would help if I put it in the back. So Chest Mod is always going to be Hardy, so increase your base health by five percent. Like I said before, that just goes towards your Aura Heals, which are max the two percent of your max health. Uh, leg Mods aren't required. Uh, beta Surge, Electron Flare, and Fracture, you're not going to use any of these as a tank anyway, and uh, all the healing from your leg mods don't scale at all. So uh, that's why I don't even spec leg mods at all. Hand mod, once again, none of these really scale at all. Max damage is just helpful. I mean, you would think, it. oh, I, sh I should take, like, Mighty Smashing, or sorry, Regenerative Shielding, because it's going to heal myself every time I use a shield. The heal is, like, 500 health. Uh, it, it, these haven't scaled in a very long time. So the only ones helpful, like there's no channel powers you're using as atomic, so you don't need to power channeling. Improved stealth is only going to be for gadgets and mental. So you're basically just taking max damage. And this is just like, as a default. And then your foot mod. This one here, once again, you have a couple options. You can take um, explosive block. In some situations, that can be useful. Other times, it's really annoying for the DPS because you're going to send the ads flying. Uh, I like Tumbling Mastery because it's going to... Your dodge roll is no longer involved in trouble, which is ha handy. So if you need to kite it all, if we need to get at a group of ads, you can dodge with Tumbling Mastery and not have to worry about being lunged and interrupted. And uh, it covers a greater distance. So Tumbling Mastery is always going to be my go-to in the foot mod. So in terms of other gear, really the only benefit... You can take your health trinket... You got your orbital strike, spy drop. What the most important thing is going to be is going to be, especially as a Tom, because it's going to be your breakout trinket. So a lot of people ask me where I can find these. They're pretty much on any sort of regular vendor. So if I go to like uh, Power Girl here, if I scroll down here, you can see right here, uh, Redeemer's Potent Charm. This is just an example, but you're going to see here on the effects applies breakout. So if I scroll down, it doesn't matter if you take the tank one or if you take the uh, the DBS one. It's these the stats are relevant. You're just taking it for the breakout. So like I said before, if you didn't see that already, it costs like, uh, what was it, like two source marks? Eight source marks. So, I mean, it's really not hard to come by eight source marks. All you want this for is the breakout itself, uh, especially for Atomic, because you're going to find a lot of situations where you're knocked out uh, and your ore drops because you're either CC'd or um, plenty of situations. So... Uh, if you don't want to get used to breaking out, then you just have that as well. And it acts as a clip too. So hard that shield, you can just clip it there, instantly summons it. So not only do you have a clipping ability, just in case you need that shield and don't want to waste the summon, uh, the important thing is that you have that breakout ability. So like I said before, if you're in the uh, uh, Hollow Doom or as a villain, I'm sure you can find this on, on any multiple ven vendors. So it doesn't matter. The item level doesn't matter. The stats, all of a sudden, you're all only looking for a trinket that says the 30% uh, control resistance breakout. Okay, so in terms of artifacts, 
you have basically as atomic, you have about four choices. So we can kind of cover that here. So I the Gemini, uh, this is mandatory. This is basically going to be for when you want to focus on either supercharged recovery for yourself or if you want to give supercharged regen to the group. Uh, it just depends on yourself. So say if you're focusing more on using like mass density or perfect poise or dash attack, then you can use Gemini not only to have the extra shield strength because you get the 5% dominance health and restoration when you stand in it, um, but you also get the, the self regen for your supercharge. You can use the su supercharge more often. So personally, myself, I use max mass density for the kind of like those oh shit moments or when I'm getting overwhelmed. So I'm not spamming enough cooldown. Uh, so that's why I don't necessarily need to have Gemini as often as possible. It's more mainly there just as a backup. And itself, is, mass density is also way overkill for regular content. So, so regular content, if you want to help the group by using supercharge, you can. But if you're just using it just for tanking, I, Gemini is not required for regular content. Uh, Manacles is going to be uh, your number one artifact as a tank. Atomic, Rage, Ice, doesn't matter. Uh, top Manacles of Force, you definitely want this at 200. Mystic uh, Symbols of the Seven basically just gives you passive uh, healing over time. Um, this one's going to scale off your resto. You also get some extra defense as well, which is handy. This isn't required at 200. It'd be perfectly fine at 160. Uh, every man prototype is nice as atomic because, as I said before, if I go back to atomic as, as a main tank, uh, the passives that atomic gets. So if I go to uh, atomic here... So you gain the following benefits while in tank roll. 90% uh, defense while not blocking. So like I said before, while you want to have that uh, fortified assault, is that if you don't block, if you block as atomic, you lose 90% defense and 25% uh, damage absorption. So that's why you definitely don't want that. Uh, you want to avoid that uh, only when you're going for counters. But uh, since the atomic is going, always going to have high defense, it's also handy to have every man prototype because basically as you take damage as atomic, which you will because... Um, you're basically just comboing the entire time. So while, you, while you're going to get healed from your atomic combos, since you're lower in health, you're going to have hit these damage ranges for the Everyman prototype. So 30% or lower, you can 12% of your max health converted to defense, 9% of your max health converted to defense, and 4% of your max health converted to defense. So uh, it's not going to really matter in regular content because you're not going to take that much damage. But in elite content, uh, your health is going to spike a lot as atomic. Similar to fire, um, that's why every man prototype works well with fire. But uh, it's going to spike enough where you're going to have that extra defense for survivability. So that's why it's going to be your number three. But like I said before, if you have Gemini already and you don't have every man leveled, you can certainly use Gemini as those as the third artifact. But other artifacts like um, Distor Refractor is not going to be really required. Cersei's Mask is going to really work uh, that well with Atomic. Um, Sparring AI is not going to really work that well with Atomic. So these are going to be your ideal three artifacts for atomic tanking. So we can kind of touch on consumables as well, because I, I didn't really touch that on the, the on the tanking side. So really the only consumables you have to worry about is your soda is always going to be bulldozer soda because you want to max your defense because you'll get more heals from your defense uh, in terms of that 40% combo heal rather than if you spec like a, a health soda, like an all natural, because you only get 2% back for that. Uh, chromatic emitters are going to be your primary stuns. And personal damage fields are just basically that extra shield. So if you're going to be using consumables or looking to track down the consumables, those are being about the three that you're going to use. Okay, for your augments. Now this may look a little bit different depending on what type of... Um, when you picked, if you picked like the Superman, Wonder Woman, or Batman in terms of the mentors. But uh, in terms of uh, the Superman one, it's going to be your neural axis coil you know, for your adaptive augments. So these ones are going to be episode specific, but once again, you just want dominance. And then your origin augments, these are going to be all dominance as well. So the other thing, last thing I want to cover in terms of this is going to be your generator mods. Uh, so let me pop over to the tech wing and I'll show you where to get generator mods and affinity mods for your generator. So let me get that. Okay, so I can't speak for the Hall of Doom, but in terms of the uh, watchtower and the tech wing, if you go to the far side here, 
it allows you to buy uh, generator mods for your affinity mods. So this is only going to be if you're wearing elite gear. So uh, if you don't know how these work, basically wearing um, two pieces of elite gear, wearing four pieces of elite gear, six, eight, uh, you basically have the chance to use these mods. They're not really super beneficial, but it is beneficial to wear the top one. So we're going to be taking dominance and we'll be taking dominance again. And like a sport, you could technically use like rejuvenating escape. Basically, each time you use a group breakout, uh, you get a small heal. It's nothing crazy to write home, uh, write home about, so it's not necessary. Same thing with the eight mod. I mean, you could use like crippling stance where you're going to stun an ad, uh, or you can use um, like it's sure footed. Sure footed, basically the. If I was atomic, I would use sure footed. Basically, you gain uh, twenty five percent. You have a twenty five percent chance to gain five percent control resistance for twelve seconds, and it can stack. But once again these don't scale that much anymore you're basically just taking the first two ones for the stats because uh, I if i'm having at least four pieces of elite gear i would have an extra two percent dominance so that does add up so let's get back to the generator mods and the layer mods and i'll show you which ones to get okay so once you're in your layer you can go to your generator and you go to mods so your affinity mods, you just be putting dominance into the first two. And then you're looking at support and your health and power. So support are always going to be dominance. And then your health and power are always going to be health. And mod these mods themselves, depending on which episode you're playing, you get, might get them in drop boxes. You might have to buy them from the vendor. You might have to craft them. Uh, they're available in multiple places. Sometimes for like the extra currency in the DLC. Sometimes for the primary currency. But that's what you're gonna look like: all health, all dominance, and then dominance in the first two affinities. The other two, like I said before, you could use whichever you like. Uh, it's not gonna be really that noticeable. Okay, so now we can touch on loadout here. So number one, atomic reorganization is going to be a range pull. And basically it's just a teleport pull. Your primary combo is going to be thermochemical explosion with the 2.5 second cooldown, like I said, and it's the lowest power cost. Each time that I'm using thermochemical, it's going to be off cooldown. So it just makes it very smooth. As you'll see, other ones are not going to be off cooldown. The nice thing about thermochemical as well is that it's a complete juggle. So while you're in this combo, it's constantly going to juggle enemies in front of you. And then like you'll see in my example, all you're doing really is thermochemical and then you hit your atomic pull to pull them back and then back into the juggle. So your third power, this one is gonna be Actually, I'll cover that in the end. So your third power is going to be your shortcut, which is going to be, like I said before, Proton Remedy. So you only need to do one combo thermochemical. You can clip it immediately with Proton Remedy, and you're right away in your aura. And you get some uh, heal boost as well. And it's usable with control, so it's handy as well. And it's 12 seconds. So it's just, I, I know some people that use like Neutrino Burst or... Uh, Neutrino Burst because it's a group immunity and immunity always helps for Atomic, but it's just way too awkward with that 18 second cooldown and just it gives you immunity, but it really doesn't give you anything else where Proton Remedy is going to be a shorter cooldown, it's going to give you heals and it's a, a shortcut. So your fourth power is going to be your primary shield density. Like I said, it is the weakest one, but it's still going to be handy as a shield. So 10% off 18 seconds and you get the 10% control resistance. So while it is weak, it's still better than nothing in that case. So you still want a shield active. So your fifth shield is going to be hard light shield. This is basically going to be offsetting the fact that density is much weaker. And then your number six power is going to be mass density. Mass density is going to be a primary supercharge. And like I said, that kind of like, oh shit power. Uh, it is the strongest tank shield uh, in the entire game and also out of all the healer supercharges. So basically you can pop this and your group is not going to die in any situation. 
I've done a nice thing about it as well. Your enemies are de are, are basically uh, taunted towards you. So say uh, the biggest example I saw this is uh, in if you look at uh, if you remember uh, Crown of Thorns the raid. So it had a whole bunch of ads. So the ads would spawn from different directions or different doors. Same kind of concept as uh, um, uh, uh, Flash of the Future. Yeah, FF. Yeah, Flash of the Future. So like I said before, like, like those Brainiac ads spawn on opposite sides. So you can pop mass density and the ads won't aggro on your other players. So it gives you a chance to pull the ads because they're going to be detaunted from those players. So it's a very handy supercharge. It is 60 seconds, but it's only 5,000 uh, power costs. So this is going to be your perfect elite loadout uh, or going to be just in general. The, the only change that I would make here, if you're doing like regular content where obviously mass density is going to be super overkill or if you're doing like alerts, you can drop this and take a second combo. So Adam Splitter is going to be another combo option. It's a little bit awkward as your primary one because like I said, the cooldowns don't line up. And the other thing is, which I'll see here in the example, each time you use Atom Splitter, the combo, it's going to teleport the ads towards you. Uh, so the issue with that is that it's stacking CC effects on top of them and it's going to really screw up with the, uh, the group uh, breakout profiles. So what I mean by that is that if you're using two combos like this, a, it's kind of redundant needing to use in two combos because I mean thermochemical is already there for you. So it makes the ads immune faster to your juggles and then they break out. And then they basically damage you because you can't do it. You, all you can do is still combo. <laughs> so it's not like you can stop your combo and, and do anything else with the ads. You just have to keep going. But if they're breaking out unnecessarily, you're just taking extra damage. So I can always juggle ads with thermochemical and just pull uh, towards uh, with the uh, atomic reorganization and just go back into my combo. But if I'm using both and alternating, the ads are going to become immune faster. So like I said, that's perfectly fine for regular content where you're kind of going really fast, pulling ads. Uh, same thing is redundant as well because you don't need two pulls. I mean, you got your primary pull and you get, this is your short range, a short range pull. So... It's not necessary, but for regular content, it'd be perfectly fine because uh, nothing's going to kill you in regular content uh, that you have density and hard light shield for. And some people prefer that just to kind of gather the ads a bit faster because, like I said before, in Elite, you're not necessarily pulling like 20 ad groups together because you're just going to die or overwhelm the group. But in regular content, you can do that. So that's pretty much your two loadout examples. So it's either going to be using Atom Splitter and dropping Mass Density, or you're taking Mass Density and dropping Atom Splitter. Uh, those are basically going to be your two primary options for atomic tanking. Okay, so to give you an example of kind of how the combo heals and everything's going to work, uh, I took off Mystic for this example because the, the extra heals you're going to get from this is just going to mess everything up. Uh, it's just not going to be as clear. So just ignore that I'm not wearing Mystic for this. But in terms of stats, in terms of uh, quick maths here, so 236,000, 278 health. So when I'm in my aura and I hit a combo, I'm going to get 2% of that max heal, which is going to be uh, 47, 25 health. And then I have 45,250 dom, which means that each time I do a combo, regardless if I'm in the aura or not, I'm going to get 18,100 heals per combo. And then we'll also show the uh, juggling aspect here. So we'll just pull these groups together. So the reason why I use thermochemical is that, as you can see, using thermochemical, I'm getting the 18100 heal, but I've got this entire group of ads in front of me and I'm not getting attacked at all. So yes, it does push them back a bit, but like I said before, you just kind of clip that with the, the pull to bring them back. But these juggles are keeping them from attacking me, which means I don't need my heal. And I just kind of keep them infinitely juggled. And the way Adam Splitter works is that it just kind of pulls them all together and stuns them. But I like to see when I'm doing that uh, pull, you can see a whole bunch of immunes and I'm still getting attacked. So I mean, half the ads are immune right there. That's why I'm not a fan of Adam Splitter. Like we said before, in regular content, it's not going to matter. 
but you have a less likely chance to have them immune by thermochemical because it's not a stun. It's just a, it's a basically a pushback. So it's a much less, basically it's a, a less likely chance that you're gonna get immunity from them because it's uh, how it works. So like before, if you didn't see that, let me just get attacked here. Because you saw the 18,100 for the uh, combo heals. But we'll get into the aura here. And we'll show you how the shortcut works as well. Except Proton Remedy will probably heal me almost all the way up. So, we're going to shortcut. And now, you'll see that 4725. So 4725, that is going to be the, each time I do a combo in my aura. So essentially, when you think of it, like you're lo you're losing, but like you know, almost 5,000 heals per second while you're not in your aura, because you'd be basically continuing to combo. And like I said before, you can see how often I'm doing thermochemical, and it's not making them immune whatsoever. Where if I was using atom splitter, you constantly see the immunes because it's it's an overlapping stun. So that just kind of gives you an idea of the rotate, and I mean, this is all it is. All you're doing is rotating, and then if you run into an issue, you're basically just clipping the pull with the density. You're just comboing, clipping the pull with hard light shield if you need it, but you're never stopping thermochemical. So we can uh, pop over to Doomsday here and just kind of show you how it works with a bit bigger of a target. So you can still block break. Still got time. And as you can see for those moments where say he knocked me out and thermochemical was like in mid combo or mid rotation, I still have time to get back into it. Or if it was an issue, I could short back into it. But I'm effectively, you know, all the damage that Doomsday is doing to me is negated by either all my combo heals or the combo aura heals. Or if I get, or if I get much lower, once again I can just shortcut. Not that I need a shortcut, but I can just clip in Proton Remedy, and it gets me right back up in heals. Or I can just hit Density once again. I'll be covered by that shield. And now my ore is dropped. And I can short back into it. And like I said before, e even if I put in, if I put like Mystic back on, then I'm getting all the passive heals from Mystic. I'm getting all the Proton heals, and you can see how much heals I'm generating myself without all I'm doing is just comboing. And I can give myself a shield or uh, give my chance to recover some more health without taking damage. And that's all atomic combo is. And see that's the effect density. So that gives you a sense of what the rotation is going to look like with adds and how they're juggled. And that gives you a sense of uh, how the heals work when you're fighting more of a, an opponent that's going to deal more damage. So like I said before, oh no, I'm, I'm low health. I can get back into more with Proton Remedy. I can clip Density so I can recover some health with my combos. And just like that, I was at like, you know, 15, 20% health and I'm back up to full just in a couple seconds. So all atomic uh, tanking is going to be is just maintaining your combo. So the, the more time you're in your combo, the better. Even if you're full health, doesn't matter. You're still maintaining that because like I said before, if you don't maintain your combo, it's going to drop and then you're going to have to shortcut back into it and then you're losing that absorption. So all it is is just maintaining your combo breaking out to when you're immune or when you're juggled 
clipping in the shields when you need it. And like I said before, if I had mass density on, I just showed you with Atom Splitter, I would be using that to uh, basically recover if I need to in a group situation. So, there's atomic tanking. 